Zia Moyuddin, the renowned Pakistani actor, director, writer, and multi talented personality, the voice of Mirza Ghalib on our podcast, passed away this week in Karachi on the 13th of February, only two days before Ghalib's own death anniversary on the 15th of February. This episode is dedicated to Zia Saab's memory. listening to rap sun rahe hain you're listening in suno tha singla ka kanada you kelta idira ni hai kada re katha sun radio radio azim range university aashiq hoon par mashuk fare bhi hai mera kaam i'm a lover but my job is to trick beloveds आशिक हूँ पर माशूक फरेबी है मेरा काम मजनू को बुरा कहती है लैला मेरे आगे वेन शी इज इन फ्रंट ऑफ मी लैला स्पीक्स बैडली ऑफ मजनू दिस इज वन ऑफ गालिब्स मिस्टिवस लव वर्स इज वी कैन कॉल दम ही इज टॉकिंग अबाउट हिज ओन प्रोविस एज इट वर एज अ लवर एज एन आशिक ही इज सो गुड दैट द फेमस लैला who is of course forever in people's imaginations with majnu says yeah you know that majnu guy I, you know I, i don't know you are something else right now this is uh, ghalib uh, doing something that is done quite frequently in this tradition actually you'll find many such couplets by other poets too which is sort of boastful couplets about their uh, you know how good of a lover they are in fact the word uh, ghazal which many of us of course are already familiar with the the word ghazal in arabic means speaking to the beloved so this genre of poetry is love poetry it's the lover speaking to the beloved you hota to kya hota the world of ghalib with amit basole Episode two, speaking to the beloved. What do we know about uh, Ghalib personally as a lover? I mean, fine, you know, he's boasting about this in his poetry, but as a man, who did he love? Did he fall in love with someone? Did he have his heart broken? What's the deal there? And luckily, we have all these letters. of him which we can again go back to for personal details of his life which don't always come up in his poetry necessarily so we know for example that in his youth and he tells us this in one of his letters which is written when he is an older man he says you know when i was young i was also in love with a domni a domni is a girl from a singing courtesan type of a caste uh, and in those days there would be many of these kinds of women who would sing poetry and dance and so forth and men like ghalib uh, aristocratic men from certain background uh, would frequent these women and listen to these poems and so on so he says maine bhi ek domni ko maar rakha tha there was one girl who was in love with me uh, and it seems to have affected him quite a bit because he speaks about this with pain too he is writing to his friend incidentally in this letter where the friend has lost a lover and the friend is besides himself with grief uh, in fact this person who he is writing to is his disciple many of ghalib's friends were also his shagirds so this is a person called uh, mirza hatim ali meher who is from aligarh and he is a student of ghalib and also his friend and he's lost this person and ghalib is saying bhai mughal che bhi ghazab hote hain jis par marte hain usko maar rakhte hain मैं भी मुगल चाहूं उम्र भर में एक बड़ी सितम पेशा डोमनी को मैंने भी मार रखा है खुदा उन दोनों को बख्शे और हम तुम दोनों को भी के जख्म में मर के दोस्त खाए हुए हैं मकफिरत करे चालीस बयालीस बरस का ये वाक है बान के ये कूचा छुट गया इस फन से मैं बेगाना महज हो गया लेकिन अब भी कभी कभी वो अदाएं याद आती हैं उसका मरना जिंदगी भर न भूलूंगा 
जानता हूं कि तुम्हारे दिल पर क्या गुजरती होगी सब्र करो और अब हंगामा इश्क मजाजी छोड़ो शादी अगर आशिकी खुनी हो जाए वी ऑल गोइंग टू डाई वन डे यू शुडंट बी सो इनकंसोलेबल विद ग्रीफ एंड देन ही गोस ऑन टू टेल हिम अबाउट द स्टोरी ऑफ हिज ओन यूथ एंड हाउ ही फेल इन लव एंड हाउ दिस पर्सन डाइड एंड हाउ इट अफेक्टेड हिम सो प्रोफाउंडली Uh, what you just heard was the voice of Zia Mohyuddin the accomplished pakistani writer actor multi talented personality thanks to whom we have an excellent collection of ghalib's letters recorded and which we will be playing on occasion through this uh, show so through these kinds of things we know a little bit about ghalib's personal life of course he was married all his life to you know his wife who they were married very early as i said earlier she was 11 and he was 13 but again in that kind of social context there are many other relationships that form with other kinds of people who are coming from let's say a background where they appreciate poetry differently these women for example would be literate they would be composers of poetry many times themselves so you can imagine a kind of a certain bond that a person like ghalib particularly the young ghalib would form with her which maybe he could not form with his wife we can speculate on that and there are famous examples or in urdu poetry of women who were from this background who became established poets in their own right one famous example from hyderabad is a person called mahalaka chanda uh, who wrote uh, in the classical urdu tradition many famous ghazals she has a kind of a one of those positions she occupies a space where she is on intimate terms with the nobility and with learned people and literate people and so on and she also has this kind of trade that she plies right that this was the kind of uh, milieu it was ani ka muntazir tere medar hi raha khatka har ek pa ka gira ba That was the opening verse of one of Malaka Chanda's ghazals um, beautifully composed by Swati Phadke and sung by Pubali Mattu There's a recent book that if people are interested in Malaka they can check out which is uh, called When Sun Meets Moon that's the title of the book on her Coming up on the other side of the break गली में दफन न कर मुझको बाद एक तू मेरे पते से खल को क्यों तेरा घर मिले I think a lot of uh, writers, especially history writers, make the mistake of putting the cart before the horse. All stories are actually driven by characters, the horses, and when your story begins to be told through the eyes of characters they come alive all great storytelling is all about people taking you through a maze of developments even setbacks sadness happiness celebrations and lot of fun the india project are our efforts to celebrate those characters who haven't received enough attention from the mainstream history writing The India Project with Josie Joseph only on Radio Azim Premji University From these uh kind of episodes that uh, ghalib refers to in his letters one can create a picture of a young ghalib in love and uh, there's one verse of his that whenever i read it it somehow takes me back to imagining him as a young man maybe lying somewhere under the shade of a nice tamarind tree or something like that and the verse goes something like this tu aur araish e khame ka kul tu और आरायश खमे का कुल यू एंड द अडोनमेंट ऑफ कर्ली ट्रेसिस मैं और अंदेशहा दूर दराज मैं 
और अंदेशहाय दूर दराज मी एंड लॉन्ग डिस्टेंट थॉट्स दिस इज अ वेरी पिक्यूलियर वर्ड्स फ्रॉम अ लैंग्वेज परस्पेक्टिव इफ यू नोटिस इट हैज नो वर्ब्स एट ऑल इट जस्ट हैज मी एंड यू एंड अ बंच ऑफ स्टफ दैट सीम्स टू कैप्चर हु आई एम एंड हु यू आर इट्स एड्रेस्ड ऑब्वियसली टू द बिलविड Why I talked about the tamarind tree is because I am imagining this person with nothing much to do except to be in love lying there and lost in some thoughts and staring up at the beloved's face with tresses coming down you can almost imagine uh for those of of a certain age and vintage might remember Amitabh Bachchan and Rekha or something you know in one of those movies like Silsila लाइंग दैर मैं और मेरी तनहाई अक्सर ये सोचा करते हैं दैट काइंड ऑफ स्पिरिट सो दिस वर्स इज ऑलवेज मेड मी इट ऑलमोस्ट गिव्स मी गूज बाम्स बिकॉज इट्स सो सिंपल इन इट्स कंस्ट्रक्शन एंड सो इवोकेटिव इन अ सर्टन मूड इट्स वेरी सिमिलर आई थिंक इन इट्स मूड वेल परहैप्स आई शूडेंट यूज द वर्ड सिमिलर बट यू कैन इमेजिन अ मैन और अ वूमन हुज एक्सपीरियंस दिस नाउ बींग ओल्डर perhaps having a lot more responsibilities and now they are saying to themselves dil dhoondta hai phir wahi fursat ke raat din baithe rahe tasavvure jana kiye hue my heart again longs for those days and nights of fursat where i had nothing much to do except just think of my beloved so later in life you have a job or you have other responsibilities you can't really sit anymore like that so these two verses to me are in a way about that initial youthful feeling of being in love and then many years back maybe reflecting back on it in order to really appreciate what people like ghalib are doing we should also remember one more thing which is that in this tradition of poetry that they are writing in it's not so important to always have a deep subjective or personal connection to what you're saying you know when we think of a love poem we think of actually being in love and then writing a poem about that feeling and that could be true to an extent and the couplets that i uh, have talked about are are in that way kind of personal couplets but he has many other verses uh, which are speaking to the beloved again but speaking in a way that we might find a bit weird and may find it a little difficult to relate to so here's an example a very funny verse which also counts in this tradition as a love poem and this you will notice is about him talking about either after he is dead what has happened or imagining what will happen and so on so a lot of poets often imagine that they are dead and then say okay what's going to happen who's going to mourn me is anyone mourning me where am i buried am i buried at all have i been thrown into the river what has happened to me these kinds of things uh, come up So here's Ghalib. Apni gali mein dafn na kar. Apni gali mein dafn na kar mujhko baad e qatl. Don't bury me in your lane after I die. Apni gali mein dafn. You've killed me. I'm dead. Where are you going to get rid of my corpse? No, 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 not not in your lane, please. अपनी गली में दफन न कर मुझको बाद एक कत्ल मेरे पते से खल को क्यों तेरा घर मिले मेरे पते से खल को क्यों तेरा घर मिले सो यू सिंग आई डोंट वॉन्ट टू हेल्प पीपल फाइंड योर प्लेस माई राइवल्स इवन आफ्टर आई एम डेड I don't want that on my head that they should come visit me at my grave and end up being in into your lane because you're mine no rivals should be able to locate where you are by visiting me and my grave a, a weird macabre kind of thing but also very fun here's another example of a verse again where this time it's not about don't do this or that after i'm dead but i am dead and here's what's happened to me again the beloved's lane is a central character in this the lane or the gali in which the beloved looks and he says urti phire hai khaak meri kuye yaar mein i am dead 
gone, I've turned to dust. And my dust is now flying around in the beloved's lane. Udti phire hai khak meri kuwe yaar mein Baare abe hawa Hawa se baalo par gai Oh wind He's addressing the wind Baare abe hawa Finally oh wind My desire for wings and feathers is gone Hawa se baalo par A very nice expression Baalo par is wings and feathers The desire for wings and feathers So that I could fly Is gone Because I'm getting to fly now I am dead, I have died in your lane, I have turned to dust, I am flying around in the wind and I am telling the wind, thank you, I have now achieved my desire for flight. When we say speaking to the beloved, who is this beloved that we are talking about? A common sense thing might be, you know, if you're a guy and you love a girl, or if you're a girl, you love a guy, then that becomes your beloved. But here, in this tradition and in this language, there are actually many ambiguities. The gender of the beloved is often left unstated. The ashik could be a man, woman. The beloved could be a man, woman. You actually don't know. So if you think about that verse that I mentioned about you and the adornment of curly tresses, maybe some of you thought, ah, curly tresses, so you know, this must be a woman. But why? There could be a guy with long curly tresses, beautiful hair, and he's the beloved there. There's actually nothing in the verse that says whether it's a man or a woman. So remember this whenever you read these poems, that either the gender will just be missing, you don't even know, or if it's there, it might be sort of a conventional masculine gender. So when the, the it might just say Boghar Aya. Boghar Aya could be a woman or could be a man. You don't know. That's that's the convention. And there's a further level of ambiguity to what the beloved is. The beloved need not be an earthly or human being at all. What happened with the evolution of the Ghazal form? over the years is that a lot of Sufis adopted this convention of the Ghazal and of speaking to the Beloved as their chosen mode for addressing God. Sufis were after a different kind of union. They were after a union not with the Beloved, not with an earthly person, but becoming one with the Almighty, with God. So they took this whole ready-made set of metaphors that were there in the Ghazal form of union with the Beloved and separation, Hijr and Visal and all of these kinds of things that uh, come up in this poetry. Hijr means separation, Visal means union. And they turned all of this into a way of talking about human beings being, human beings yearning to be united with where they are separated from. And where are they separated from? From their Creator. So if you look at a very famous verse of Ghalib, ye na thi hamari kismat ke visale yaar hota, agar aur jite rehte, yehi intazar hota. Ye na thi hamari kismat ke visale yaar hota, it is not my fate, it wasn't my fate to be united with the beloved. Agar aur jite rehte, yehi intazar hota. Had I lived longer, I would still be waiting for that union. How do you interpret this? What is this yar? One explanation or one interpretation is that it's an earthly beloved. And he's saying, it was my destiny to forever pine after this person that I loved, a specific human person that I loved. I could never be united with them. That was my destiny. But that's not necessarily the only interpretation. If instead we think that the beloved is not earthly but divine, so the creator, then Ghalib is saying, that it wasn't my destiny in this lifetime to be united with the Creator. And had I lived longer, I would remain separated from that Creator. If you want to dig deeper into any of the ideas we have discussed today um, or read more about Ghalib and his poetry, I encourage you to visit the show notes 
where we have collected a whole bunch of resources that are out there, including the excellent website of Professor Francis Pritchard, which I have alluded to many times. There are also excellent video lectures by Ustad Ahmed Javed of Lahore, um, as well as many other uh, nice articles and books collected over there. Next time, we will talk a little bit more about Ghalib's views on religion, on faith, on rituals, on God, and other such matters. But before that, poverty and statistics. Not for you, but for my students. Until next time, bye for now. That was episode two, Speaking to the Beloved. On the next episode... Cheap barfi hai, aap khayenge? Musalman ho kar? Aur barfi hindu hai? Aur kya? Ghalib, tumne roze rakhe? Jaha pana, ek nahi rakha. Mare but khane mein, to kaabe mein gaado brahman ko. Make sure you check out the show notes where we share the show resources and acknowledgements and don't forget to subscribe or follow our channel for future episodes. You're listening to Insuna Thar. Shangla Kaikan Nadar. You Keltai Dira. Nihai Kata. Re Kata Sun. Radio. Radio. Azim Brain Jee. University.